Welcome to Bethel Apostolic Portmore Zoom Church. Praise the Lord. And we give God thanks again, as always, for this medium to share his word. Praise the Lord. Welcome to all the to the to our pastor, Elder Romano, this, to Associate Pastor Elder Owen Brown. God bless you, sir. To our Associate Pastor Evangelist Hortense Oliphant, to all the officers, to all the saints of the most high God, to all the visitors from near and far. We greet you in no other name but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And if you are not yet saved tonight. Tonight is the night to be saved, not yet baptized, not yet filled. Let's go ahead and open up your hearts. Praise the Lord. A word is in store for you. God bless you, everyone. And without any further delays, I'll go ahead and hand over to our pastor, Hilda Romano. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much, Brother Demain. The Lord bless you. Let me also just underscore the greeting that was expressed earlier. Please accept greetings, everyone, in the precious name of Jesus. We're certainly grateful for his tender mercies towards us. Because had it not been for his mercies, we certainly would have been consumed. But he has been tremendously good, and we're thankful to him. To all of our associate pastors and officers, brothers and sisters, especially our visitors, God bless you. Um, I know today is the birthday of Sister Shanique and Sister Thorpe. I'm not sure if they're online tonight, but let me just say happy birthday. Uh, if you are, it would be nice for you to come and share a testimony of thanksgiving, because certainly the Lord has been good to That's you right. also by extending to you another year. Amen, amen. Um, we're grateful to God. We celebrate with you in the name of Jesus. All right, um, I believe you can see my slide. And it says worship. All right. Good. All right. Everybody can see the slide? All right. Amen. Praise God. All right, great. All right, so we're going to look tonight at worship. Um, a couple of our objectives will be tonight to look at the biblical, a brief, a bi brief biblical history of worship. Look at expressions of worship, the blessings for true worshipers, and the hindrance to true worship. Um, one of the reasons we're looking at this is, um, is that if there is a position that we're called to do or called to be, it's a worshiper. It is in St. John chapter 4. Jesus is talking to the woman of Samaria. And in, this, in the discussion that he had with her, the issue of worship came up and the, ex and the scripture expressed to us that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's verse 24. But the previous verse says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him. I wanted to be mindful of the fact that if there's anything that we are in God and must be, it is a worshiper. Before we become anything else, we need to be true worshipers of the Lord. Um, it is the position that is going to transcend the earth into eternity. Because when we got the Holy Ghost, we became witnesses. And through that indwelling, we started to occupy different offices, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and the rest of it, deacons and all these different offices. But those offices are going to cease down here. But the office that we'll continue to maintain when we get to heaven is that of a worshiper. And so it's important then that we know who a worshiper is and make sure that we are true worshipers because we're going to still worship after we've leave this place. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So biblical history of worship, from the beginning of time, human beings have worshiped God. And because it's an innate desire for us to worship, the truth is that 
If we don't worship the true and living God, we're going to end up worshiping something false. That's the reality. But as we explore the scriptures and see mankind worshiping the true and living God, we have examples of Adam and Eve who had fellowship with God in the Garden of Eden. They walked with God in the cool of the day. That speaks to worship. We have Cain and Abel bringing offerings to God. One from the field, the other from his flock. They brought something, an offering. It's an expression of worship. After Abel was murdered by Cain, Seth was born and his descendants call upon the name of the Lord. That's what true worshipers do. Noah built an altar to the Lord before he burnt for a burnt offering. The moment he got off the ark, after judgment took place upon the earth, the first thing Noah did was to offer God worship. Abraham built altars all over the promised land. Scattered throughout the promised land, you could find altars that represented his time of communion and fellowship with Almighty God. Because every worshiper knows how to build an altar. Every worshiper knows how to lay a sacrifice. Abraham taught not only, Abraham not one, not not only was Abraham a worshiper, but even his very son. So much so that when he, Abraham, was carrying his son to offer him as a, as a sacrifice, notice what the son said. He says, Dad, I see the wood. I see the fire. So I know instantly in my mind you're about to worship. And then he says, where's the sacrifice? Where's the lamb? Where's the sacrifice? Because uh, I understand that if you're going to worship, you need a sacrifice. So a worshiper knows how to sacrifice. My God and Savior, Jesus. Somebody need to praise God right now. Hallelujah. True worshipers. Just lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In spite of what you Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Worship God. My God and Savior, Jesus. My God. We're about to see an evening this lesson. And even before we get there, that even when there are trying times, it doesn't stop us from worshiping him. Even when, it's, when we don't feel like it, we can still worship him. And when we begin to do so, then certainly a blessing is in store for the true worshiper. Uh, public worship became formalized in the wilderness. So we're moving from Ab Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Seth, Noah, Abraham, and then we got into the formalization of public worship that took place in the, around the tabernacle in the wilderness. So- Not hearing you, sir, not hearing you. Okay, I'm not sure what's taking place. Still not hearing me? So praise I am the Lord. hearing. I'm hearing, I'm hearing as well. Okay, Brother Brown, can you hear? Still not hearing you, is it that it's me alone or? It's you alone, sir. Anybody else is? Can you hear me, Brother Brown? I mean, you hearing me? You hearing me sir? Yes, we're hearing you. Okay, his audio. Let me see. You hearing Pastor? Yes, they are hearing me. Too. You're hearing Pastor Damien? See, that's always my, my instrument. Yes. All right, go ahead, sir. Sorry about that. You might want to restart or reconnect. Uh, you can send him, a, uh, send, him a, send him a chat, Brother Damien. Yes. All right. So we move to public worship, becoming formalized in the wilderness. Remember, God had instructed Moses to build a tabernacle, gave him the pattern and the design as to how it should be erected, the tabernacle, and right around that, in the midst of the wilderness wanderings, they were now taught how to worship. They were brought out of bondage. And we know Egypt is a type of the world. And they were now brought to a place of worship, which underscores the fact that as soon as we are born again, we need to know how to worship our God. Hallelujah. And that's what they were taught while they were in the wilderness. To see God and see him alone as everything. It is in the wilderness they learned that he is a provider. It is in the wilderness that they learned that he is their deliverer. 
It is, it is in the wilderness that they taught, that he taught them that he is the God who knows how to fight their battles. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, I'm getting a little bit excited in this place. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Father seeketh such true worshipers, they that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Exodus 23 and verse 14 says, Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month Abib. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruit of thy labor, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Three times in the year shall, thou, shall thy males shall appear before the Lord. And so we see at different intervals, at different experiences that they're having in their lives, they're commanded to worship the Lord. Those feast days were worship days. And they came and celebrated and commemorated the things that God had done for them as they exalt and magnify his name. It was centralized in Jerusalem around the temple built by Solomon. And Solomon erected the temple um, that was designed by his father or instructed by his father to build David. Solomon raised up this temple to bring honor and glory to the Lord. And in First Chronicles, from First Chronicles 22 to chapter 26, you, you can read how the worship was just exploding in the, in, 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 around the temple. When the temple was destroyed, the Jews built synagogues while they were in exile and wherever they settled. And so we saw that wherever they went, they still maintain that attitude of worship. We saw that in Daniel, when he was taken away in Babylon, he kept on praying. That's an act of worship. And he brought honor and glory to the Lord and brought God into his situation. And it's there that we saw that God rule in the affairs of men. And through his worship, he was able to bring others to the knowledge of the true and living God. Worship in the early church took place both in the temple in Jerusalem and also in private homes and in public halls. And so they went from house to house. They break bread, they share the word of God. They were worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory and the honor to the Lamb of God. There are two key principles that governs Christian worship. Uh, number one, true worship takes place in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. All right. When we talk about spirit, we talk about the sincerity of the heart. When we talk about truth, we're talking about the word of God. So if we're going to worship God, we must do so from the sincerity of our hearts, with all honesty and genuineness. And according to the scriptures, that's what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth. Notice the common spirit is used, which is in reference to man's spirit, which speaks to man's sincerity. And according to the New Testament pattern, as seen in the book of Acts, we're going to be exploring that shortly. So we see some things happening in the Old Testament. But not everything came across to the New Testament. And so we need to now take a pattern or take a look at the pattern that existed in the New Testament times to see how they actually worshipped the Lord. And so the key features of Old Testament worship was the sacrificial system. Jordan. Since Christ sacrificed on the cross, fulfilled this system, they're no longer is any need for the shedding of blood as part of the Christian worship. So on the Old Testament, they would take an animal, take a lamb, kill, shed blood. But since all of that was a type of Christ and pointed to Jesus Christ, there's now no need to be shedding blood because he shed blood once and for all. And so through the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, so this is also... This is one of the patterns of New Testament worship. So through the Lord's Supper, the New Testament church commemorates the once and for all sacrifice 
that the Lord laid, that the Lord did on the Mount Calvary. And so every time we commemorate the Lord's blood and body, this sacrifice that he made, we're actually entertaining and actually demonstrating an act of worship unto the Lord. We offer up sacrifices of praise unto God continually. And the Bible says this is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. All right, so one, we talk about the Lord's Supper being a New Testament type of worship. Now we look at offering up the sacrifices of praise to God continually being the fruit of our lips. So an expression of the heart, because out of the heart or out of the, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So it is that the Lord has so touched our hearts. He has so demonstrated his, his compassion towards us. And so, and so we're moved with gratitude and thanksgiving. And out of our mouth, out of our hearts, our words now begin to express thanksgiving unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, my God, and his mercies endureth forever. And we're not just saying thanks. We're not just repeating the word thanks. But there's something behind our praise. Hallelujah. There's a testimony of what God has done. Because no doubt many of us even today can testify that had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, we would have been cut off. We would have met in an accident. Nothing good we did to deserve his love and his mercies, but because of his grace. And so we can say, thank you, Jesus, as we reflect, as we think about the goodness of the Lord. If we could ever get a glimpse of some of the near misses of the day, how close we came to losing it all. But Jesus, hallelujah, but for the Lord's mercy, my God and Savior. And so we give him thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We also offer our bodies as living sacrifices. All right? Holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So we're looking at the New Testament patterns. All right? So we're talking about our bodies. In the Old Testament, we talk about a dead sacrifice because that lamb that was brought was slain. But the sacrifice today speaks to a living one. So it's while we're alive, we're living sacrificially. We're denying ourselves, taking up the cross, coming into a conformance to his image, being obedient to his word, taking on his, his, his form, his shape, his character. It, uh, it says that which is holy and acceptable unto God. That means it meets his requirement. The sacrifice that he requires has to meet his requirements. Just to look at the Old Testament type, just to give us a, a better view of the sacrifice. They would take a lamb, for example, and that lamb would be searched to make sure that there is no broken leg or any broken limb within that lamb. Then they would take that lamb and put him down for seven days just to make sure that he's not sickly and he was just feeling well at the moment because he needs to meet the requirement. He needs to fit the bill. And so when, he, when they have done their examination and realize that, yes, this lamb is ready, this lamb qualifies, then they now take that sacrifice and offer it unto the Lord. And so today, when we talk about offering our bodies, we're not just talking about our physical man, but body, spirit, and soul, our mind, our very thoughts. So we're careful of the things that we think about. We're careful of the things that we look at because our bodies become the, live, the temple of the living God. And this temple offers sacrifices and worship and praise to Almighty God. And in order to maintain its purity, we've got to be careful of the things that we see, the things that we hear. We can't afford that to allow certain things to get through the eye gate and the ear gate of our souls to bring contamination to our spirits. David said, I'll set no evil thing before mine eyes. Because what? I am a temple of the living God. I am a true worshiper. And I don't want to corrupt my spirit. I want when I lift my praise unto him, it ascends with a truthful heart. My God and Savior Jesus. It is, some, it, is, it is difficult if you have been spending hours on ending, watching, for example, an X-rated movie to come to church the following day and to lift your hands because the weight of what you place within weighs you down. 
You got to get rid of that mess in order to lift up hands and give God true worship because he's looking for truth in the inward parts. He's looking for a heart that is pure. He said, who shall ascend into thy holy hill? He that hath clean hands, a pure heart, a heart that is sanctified, a heart that is dedicated unto him. Praising God is also essential to worship. All right, so we looked at a couple of principles. True worship is in spirit and in truth. We looked at a couple of New Testament patterns, the Lord's Supper, offering our bodies, living sacrifice, the fruit of our lips. And then praise is another act of worship, and it is essential to worship. It's a part of worship. Worship includes praise. Uh, so, 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 so in worship, there is praise. But you can praise and not worship. But once you worship, you will praise. In fact, praise comes before worship. If you look at the tabernacle pattern, when you move from the outer court to the holy of holies, to the inner court, you're really moving from praise to worship. And so before you ever get to a place of worship, praise becomes the vehicle that transports you to the place of true worship. You got to know how to praise him. And so both Israel as well as the early church, the New Testament church, uh, praise is, what is what is required of us, irrespective of which era in which we find ourselves. As I had indicated before, there are some things that carries from the old even into the new. And so in Psalm 100, very familiar text, we know it quite well. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Can you imagine when the children of Israel, when they enter the tabernacle, they were entering in with thanksgiving. They were entering with praise. And they were already thankful unto him before they even offered the lamb as their sacrifice. Because they knew that the sacrifice that they brought was a holy one. It was an acceptable one. And they knew once it met the requirement, they're about to experience the blessings of Almighty God. Hallelujah. So when we enter the sanctuary, when we enter the presence of Almighty God, we enter with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter with worship in our spirits. No wonder in the pattern of prayer, the Lord says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed, holy, be thy name. That's worship. That's praise we're giving unto the Lord. In Psalm 106 and verse number one, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good for his mercies endureth forever. My God, somebody give God praise for his mercies. Hallelujah. Psalm 111 and verse number one. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Hallelujah. And so, yes, I'm going to praise him at home. I'm going to praise him everywhere I go including when we assemble together, we gather together and we build God a spiritual house, offering up spiritual sacrifices because we're royal priesthood unto the most high God. Psalm 113 and verse one says, praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So even the very name of God is praised because we understand there's power in the name of Jesus. When you call that name, something happens. The woman that was in the hospital on her bed wrote the song that says, Sweetest name on mortal tongue. Sweetest name, my God, that has ever been sung. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And sometimes when you can't pray, just breathe the name Jesus. And just the mention of his name, my God and Savior, Jesus turns up in the house. You begin to feel his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You begin to feel his anointing. Mighty God and Savior Jesus. Somebody is feeling the anointing of the Lord in your house even now. And whenever God shows up, he shows up for a reason. Hallelujah. Something good is about to happen. Somebody call him by his name. Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. The righteous run it in and they are saved. There is safety in the name of Jesus. It is Peter and John on his way 
to a prayer meeting that met a man at Gate Beautiful and says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name, hallelujah, the matchless name, the holy name, the royal name, my God and Savior, the majestic name, Jesus, sweetest name. He shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The Old Testament saints desired to know his name. But what a revelation we have gotten today. Hallelujah. We've found out that neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name given among men under heaven whereby man must be saved. I heard Brother Agri said on Sunday night, we've got to be baptized and buried in the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I've been buried in water baptism in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the scripture says, know ye not that so many of us are baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized into his death. Therefore, we're buried with him. And so those who die with him shall be raised with him. The Bible says, when the Lord returns, the dead in Christ shall rise. For you to be dead in Christ, you've got to be buried in water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody give him glory. Jesus, my God and Savior, Jesus. Hallelujah. Something about the name of the Lord Jesus. Psalm 117 says it well. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great towards us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise he the Lord. I heard Sister Short while she prayed earlier. And just in case, Sister Short, and, my, and, my, and there might be others who might be going through a rough time right now. Hallelujah. We don't just want to sing the song when trouble in my life sing praises. We want to do what it says. Hallelujah. Because your praise becomes the vehicle that will transport you from one realm into another. It is your praise that will bring God into your situation. And if God gets in there, then something good is about to happen. It's about to change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Manda Koshama, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. When we get to the New Testament, in Acts chapter number 2, 46 through 47, the writer says, And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily as such as should be saved. My God, in Acts chapter 6, Acts chapter 16, and verse number 25, the Bible says, And in the, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Yes, their ankles were shackled. Yes, their wrists were shackled. And possibly the shackles were tied from their hands to their feet. And it was in a dark dungeon that they found themselves in. But while their body was shackled, can I tell you, their praise was not shackled. The Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Not only did they pray, they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners, hallelujah, heard them, my God and Savior, Jesus. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. Do you know of some prisoners beside you? Do you know of some prisoners next door to you? Can I tell you that your praise will set the captive free? Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him glory because he's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Hallelujah. devil might stop you in your feet. Hallelujah. Cause you not to walk the way you want to walk. He can stop your praise. You can praise your way out of your situation because praise is powerful. It is in Romans chapter 15. In verse number 10 through 11, it says, And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and Lord him, all ye people. Hebrews chapter number 2 and verse number 12 tells us a little bit more about the praise that we ought to give unto the King of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible says it this way, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. 
in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Don't let nobody steal your praise. Hallelujah. Let no one stop you from praising your God. Hallelujah. Nobody knows like you know what you've been going through. Nobody knows like you know what you've been through. Nobody knows like you know, hallelujah, where God has brought you from. And so you've got a right to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got a right to praise him. Singing hymns and spiritual songs, the Bible says. So as we praise him, as we allow the praise to flow from our hearts, as we lift up the praise unto the Lord, we also sing hymns and spiritual songs as we praise the name of the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord, all his saints. At the birth of Jesus, the angelic hosts, all of the heavenly hosts sang, they burst into singing, praising and giving glory unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Under no, no circumstances did they view singing as any form of entertainment. It was an expression of worship and praise to the Lord. It was an opportunity for them to lift up their hearts unto God. It was not entertainment. If this was any form of entertainment, it was to entertain God and not to entertain people. Hallelujah. And so our worship, our praise belongs to the Lord and to no one else. It is in James chapter 5 and verse number 13 that says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Sing psalms unto the Lord. Another element of worship is seeking God face in prayer. So we're talking about praise, talking about worshiping in his spirit and truth through the Lord's Supper, offering our bodies as living sacrifice. We're also talking about seeking the face of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is in 1 Samuel chapter number 8. And verse number six, that the Bible records, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. He began to seek the Lord. That's an act of praise. That's an act of worship unto the Lord. And so we seek in the face of the Lord is another act of worship. All right. In, back to James chapter 5, verse 17 through 18 this time. It says to us, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. So we see Elijah seeking the face of Almighty God, that the Lord would open the windows of heaven and cause it to rain again because it had stopped before. And the famine was upon the land, but somebody was daring enough to seek the face of God. I'm remembering David when he got to Ziglag. While these men were contemplating stoning him, while he was suffering loss because his wife and his children were stolen, his house was burnt to the ground. And it was a time of confusion. It was a time of despair. What did David do? David says, get me the ephod. In other words, I'm going to seek God's face. Lord, tell me what to do. Should I pursue? Hallelujah. And the Lord answered and spoke to him. My God and Savior Jesus. Every time I think about that scripture, I think to myself, if I came home and saw the house burnt to the ground, wife and children are gone, would I be praying or would I be panicking? <laughs> My God and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But David says, get me an ephod. And he began to pray and he sought the Lord. And the Lord gave him an answer and he knew what to do. My God, and when you get a word from the Lord, your situation is bound to change. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17 through 18, 
It says, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so as we pray, we need to include in our prayer thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In everything, we ought to give him thanks. In the good times, give him thanks. In the bad time, do the same. Because in everything, we ought to give him thanks. Because all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purposes. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Confession of sin is also another important part of worship. An entire day was given in the Old Testament to the confession of sin. According to Leviticus 16, it talks to us about the day of atonement. It was the high day in Israel when the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies on behalf of the nation of Israel and offer sacrifice on behalf of the nation so their sins could be atoned for. And so from the old even unto the new, we see at the dedication of the temple in 1 Kings 8, confessions were made at the temple. Nehemiah and Ezra led the nation of Judah into public prayer of confession in Nehemiah chapter number 9. In the Lord's prayer, that should be prayer pattern. We see where the, there's a pattern that says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. So there's confession of sins is a part of the worship, the act of worship. Remember, if you look at the Old Testament tabernacle, it's really a portrait, a picture of what worship is really about. And when they came to the altar in the outer court, the brazen altar, it was to offer a sacrifice for sin. So confession of sin is a part of the worship experience. And so as we worship him, we also offer confession for our sins, knowing that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all, from all, somebody needs to say from all, not some, but all unrighteousness. He is faithful and he is just to forgive us. And not only does he forgive us, he forgets it. He throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. But every now and again, some of us, not even others, sometimes some of us get on our scuba di or our, our diving suit and go back and go to some deep diving and dig up the thing that God has forgotten. And we have it in our minds remembering. And that in and of itself sometimes become a weight when God has forgiven. He says, forget it. Forgetting the things which are behind press. My God and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And sometimes we say, Lord, I'm asking you how to forget or how to let this go. God says, if God says, forget it, that means you can forget it. He didn't say pray about it. There are some things we're praying about that we don't need to pray about. We need to just do it. Lay aside every way. Didn't pray about it. Sometimes we don't want to lay it aside. Sometimes we don't want to forget it. We want to keep on reminding ourselves of the hurt and the pain. We need to release it. It is in that prayer of confession that we begin to release it unto the Lord so he can free us and let go the individual. Don't hold on to it. It will hold on to us and keep us back. Help us to let it go, Lord. Release it in Jesus' name. Release it in Jesus' name. Abba, Father, release it in Jesus' name. Worship must also include public reading of the scriptures. In Deuteronomy 31 and verse number 9, we find these words recorded. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord and unto all the elders of Israel. Verse 10, and Moses commanded them saying, at the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the feast of tabernacles, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the, play, in the place, which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. In Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse number 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man in the streets. 
that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding. Upon the first day of the seventh month, can I tell you something, brethren? There's a time that we never had the Bible to read. Now we have this awesome opportunity. We have the word on our phones. We have it in our, we have the Bible. We have it on our computers. We have it everywhere. And sometimes we don't read it, but it's a blessing. It's an act of worship to read the word of God. And he read therein before the streets. That was before the water gate. From the morning until midday. Before the men and the women. And those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mathathia, and Shema, and Anaya, and Yuja, and Hilkiah, and Messiah, on his right hand, and on his left hand, Padadiah, and Mishael, and Malchia, and Hashem, and Hashbadana, and Zechariah, and Melshalom, and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up, and Ezra blessed the people, the great God. Sorry. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads, and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And Jeshua and Bani, and Shibriah, Jami, Akub, and Shabithia, Adija, Masia, Kelita, Aziria, Jozabed, Hanan, Palia, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading my God and Savior, and Nehemiah, which is the Tershata, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, this day is the whole, is holy unto the Lord your God. More not, nor we, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. My God, remember they were coming back from captivity and now they're hearing God's promises. They're hearing God's word. Yes, you have sinned and you should be mourning and bawling and crying out to God for repentance. But they say, hey, cease. My word is being read. It's time to worship the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be he sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites still all the people saying, hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. And from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the Lord declared in Luke chapter number four, as he stood in the temple, hallelujah. And he read from the book of Isaiah. So Luke chapter four and verse 16 said it this way. And he came to Nazareth where he had been taught, brought up. And as he was custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. He hath, anointed, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year. It's beautiful to read the word of Almighty God. It's a privilege that the Lord has granted unto us, his people, the ability to read, the ability to understand, and through which we can give him glory and honor and praise because he is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Another expression of worship is, through, is with our tithe and our offering. Psalm 96 and verse number 8 tells us about our offering. Psalm 96 
and verse number eight. And it says, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Malachi 3 and verse number 10 says it this way. He says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And 1 Corinthians 16, 2 also tells us. It says here, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. And just in case you're on this line, and you're one of the persons who talks about tithing is an Old Testament. The Bible says all scriptures. Somebody said all scriptures. That means from Genesis to Revelation. That means Old Testament to New Testament. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is the word of Almighty God. Hallelujah. And if under the Old Testament system, where they had dead animals as sacrifice, and they only gave 10% of what they got, how much more Jesus as our ultimate sacrifice should we give? You only want to give 10? That's all he requires. You really should give all. And that's what he asks for, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Everything belongs to him. My mind, my body, my spirit, my, my time, my talent, my treasure belongs to him. Let's give him everything because he's worthy of everything. <clears throat> Another way in which we express worship is through the very manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, which was also a part of the unique way that they worship the Lord in the New Testament. When you get to the book of Corinthians, you find several supernatural giftings in operation, that of prophecy, that of interpretation of tongues, that of <clears throat> um, diverse languages, that of gifts of faith, gifts of faith, gifts of healing, Miracles, working of miracles, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. So when these giftings even itself begins to operate through us, it is actually there, it is, the, it is the operations of God through us. And that operation comes to profit all. It comes to benefit the body of Christ. That's an act of worship. That's an act of praise. Because when the Spirit of God begins to move in operation, you get a word of prophecy. You get a word of interpret, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. We are, given, we are oftentimes given instructions as to what to do, which brings revelation, which brings understanding, and changes our position oftentimes. And so we ought to give Him glory, and we ought to give Him praise, and allow the Spirit of God and the giftings of the Spirit to operate through us so that His name can be glorified. Water baptism is another act of worship and praise to the king. It is in Acts chapter number 8. And some of you need to take a reference to the lesson that Brother Agri did on Sunday night. It's on our YouTube page. But just in case you weren't there, then Acts chapter 8 and verse number 12 tells us about water baptism. It says, but when they believe Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. In chapter 9 and verse number 18, the Bible says, And immediately there fell from his eyes, as it were, as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. That is Peter, sorry, that was Paul, after he had the experience on Damascus Road, where an angel, where a light shone from heaven and knocked him off his horse. He was on his way persecuting Christians, destroying them. And the Lord knocked him off and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he was struck blind. He was led to Ananias who prayed for him. Scales fell from his eyes and immediately he was baptized in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. The same thing happened in Acts chapter 10 at Carnelius' house. And the same thing happened to the Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16. The very night there was a jailhouse rock and the, and the warder would have killed himself because he thought that the prisoner had escaped when he looked and saw the prison cells open because they had a worship session and God dispatched angels and opened up that prison, caused an earthquake to shake that place. My God and Savior Jesus. 
and he was about to kill himself, but Paul went to the, went to the warders house the very night, shared with him Jesus Christ, and that very night he was water baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. It's a part of our worship experience as we're given glory and praise. The blessings that come for true worshipers. There is a blessing that comes when we worship. So those were the expressions that we talked about earlier of giving God worship. Now there's a blessing. There are blessings that comes when we worship the Lord. Another, uh, he promises to be with us where two or three are gathered, Matthew 18, 20. He promised to overshadow his people with his glory. Hallelujah. That means protections come. There's a covering, the glory of God. The beauty of Jesus is seen in us to impart abundance of joy. My God, joy comes in our lives when we worship him. Remember now, joy is in the presence of the Lord. And as we worship, as we praise him, he inhabits our praises. And in the presence of the Lord, because he inhabits our praises, guess what? In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And if there's fullness of joy, then guess what? I am strong because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Answers to prayer comes, my God and Savior, Jesus. When we begin to worship the Lord, as we express our heart and pray unto the Lord, then guess what? Answers come. And can I tell you, I've been hearing of many good news hallelujah, of many other requests that has come in. And I, I, I'm, just, I'm just wanting persons who have come to, the, come to have the experience to start to share. Don't hold back your testimonies. There are many persons who have heard that submitted prayer requests on this line, in this meeting room, and prayers were made on your behalf. And those persons have been healed. Those persons have been restored. Those persons are doing much better even amen, now, amen, even amen, today. Amen. My God and Savior, somebody say amen. Glory to amen, God. Amen, amen. God, glory to God. So the, the blessings that come to the true worshiper is answered prayers. My God, Jesus hears and answers our prayer. My God and Savior, Mark chapter 11 and verse number 24 said it well. Hallelujah. He says here, therefore I say unto you, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. My God, Jesus, hallelujah. I'm going to go from verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever shall what whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, you open your mouth and say it, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said with his mouth, it shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. That's the word of the Lord. Somebody ought to give him praise right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A refreshing of the Holy Spirit comes, and it comes with boldness when we begin to worship the Lord. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 31, my God, the disciples had a worship session. Glory to God in the highest. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with boldness. There's power in the presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything we need is in the presence of the Lord. When we pray the blessing that comes, we get guidance that leads us into all truth. You're not too sure what to do, where to go, where to do, what to do. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. The Holy Ghost brings guidance. As we begin to worship him, he begins to reveal to us the thing that we need to do and the place we need to go so that his will can be accomplished in our lives. To sanctify his people by his word. When we worship, sanctification begins to take place. He begins to separate us. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It becomes separated from the ungodly and dedicated to the godly. Sanctification takes place even in the presence of the Lord. 
When we worship, we are comforted, we are encouraged, and we are strengthened. We spoke about strength earlier in the joy of the presence of the Lord. When we worship the Lord, conviction comes to our hearts because the Spirit of God also brings conviction. And when we are convicted, then it's time to confess. And when we confess, we are going to be forgiven. And when we're forgiven, we can rejoice because our sins have been removed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And to the sinner who becomes convicted, they need to repent and turn to the Lord so that they too can receive so great salvation. My God and Savior, Jesus. Hindrance to true worship. And we're getting ready to wrap up to close this session. Hindrance to worship. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is a hindrance to worship. Matthew chapter 15, verse number 7 through to 9. And it says, He hypocrites, well did his sires prophesy unto you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Jesus speaking to the Pharisee who considered themselves to be true worshipers. The Lord said, you come nigh with your mouth, so I can be worshiping with my mouth, but my heart is really not in it. It's hypocrisy. I'm pretending. I'm just saying hallelujah because somebody say hallelujah. I'm not re I don't really mean it. I don't really want to worship the Lord. I'm dying for the serv service over so I can go home in my yard. I want to go and go cook my dinner, my Sunday dinner, or whichever dinner. I want to come off the line. I'm just saying hallelujah because instead say hallelujah. But the true worshiper understand that there is a God that must be worshipped. There's a God that must be served. His name is Jesus, and we give him true worship. Hallelujah. It is in Revelation 2 and verse 1 through 5 that we see a similar situation taking place. It says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, we know what happened. They left their first love. They're worshiping, but how do you worship when Jesus is not your first love? He had to command them to repent because they are now sinning. In other words, God was not the number one priority of their lives anymore. They were, they were, doing, they were doing works, but Jesus was number one. Those who partake of the Lord suffer without departing from sin. That's another hindrance to worship. So I, if I'm living in sin and practicing sin, and then come to the Lord's table, and I know I'm not, I'm not repenting of my sins, then I, I'm, I'm unworthily taking, partaking of the body of Christ, and I'm eating to myself damnation. I can become sick and even die at the Lord's table because I'm taking it unworthily. So sin is in my life. I haven't dealt with the sin. I need to go and deal with it, put it before the Lord, confess it, and allow him to wash me clean, and then come to the table to give him thanks. For the provision. We don't come to the table to confess our sins. We do our sins, we confess our sins before we come to the table. We come to the table to worship. We come to the table to commemorate the Lord's death, his burial, his resurrection. We're partaking of his, his body and his blood. We understand that this was shed because of my sin. So I can't be living in sin and come to the table to partake at the same time. I need to go and deal with this sin and then come. Or if I'm living a lifestyle of compromise, Sin and immorality. First Samuel 15 gives us the story of Saul who disobeyed the Lord, compromised, didn't carry out the instructions of the Lord fully, but partially. Those things are hindrance to true worship. And if we regard iniquity in our heart, the Lord will not hear us. And so we've got to cleanse our heart. James chapter 4 tells us that sometimes we pray and miss. James chapter 4 and says, from whence come wars and fightings among you. This is believers that James is talking to. Come there not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your own lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the fellowship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever we therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of Almighty God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? 
And so we need to get rid of hypocrisy, pretend to be what we're not. We need to ensure that when we come to the Lord's table, that we have cleansed ourselves and spent some time in preparation to come before the Lord. We need to ensure that we're not living a life of sinful activities, compromise, and immorality. If we come to the Lord's table in that act, we're going to suffer the consequences of it. The Lord is looking for true worshipers. Because when you know how to worship God, you know how to connect to God. You know how to bring God into your situation. The true worshiper, the true worshiper, that's who we'll be when we get to heaven. That's the one of the position that transcends time into eternity. We're going to put on our calling. Pastor, you're going to put on the pastor role. You're going to put on the minister role. When we get to heaven, we are worshipers, true worshipers, worshiping him for all of eternity. So we've got to get the worship right here and now clear and concise and get it right that yes, I'm a true worshiper and understand what it means to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let us give an example as we get ready to close. The story is told in Matthew chapter 15, verse 22 to 28. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My God, she knew something about Jesus. This is a Canaanite woman. But she knew something about the Lord. It somehow seemed that she's expecting the Lord. She heard about him. She knew that he's the, he, he's the son of David. He's royal lineage. He's the promised one to come. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. She knows that he can handle this situation. But he answered her not a word. When you pray and God says nothing, what do you do? And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. So when Jesus don't answer you, and the church brethren tell you, Come out of the place. The Bible says she cried after. The Bible says she, for, um, he, the disciples came and besought her, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So she is now, he's now addressing her. Then came she and worshipped him. So she prayed of her. She talked to him first about her situation. He said nothing. But here comes she changed her position and she began to worship. Remember now, the hour is and now is and the hour cometh that the Father seeketh true worshippers. And here is Jesus Christ as our Heavenly Father looking for true worship. He can't ignore it. Even though it was not coming out of the coast of Israel, it's coming outside, but he can't ignore it because true worship is coming to him. Hallelujah. Then came she and worshipped him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might feel like an outcast, but guess what? You can worship your way into his presence. My God, and that, that, that's what this woman did. Saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. She's not expecting that kind of an answer. But she's not giving up either. Because a worshiper does, never gives up. A worshiper knows how to press. Hallelujah. You've been pushing in praise for a long time. By the time you get to worship, you ain't backing down. You're going all the way. A worshiper is willing to make the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, the true Lord. Watch this. God, don't tell a lie. Whatever God said, that's how it is. Don't argue. If God said, I can't take the bread and give it to the true Lord. I'm a dog. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fell from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Can I tell you, wherever God sees faith, he's going to answer it. Wherever he sees faith, he's going to respond to it. He can't Amen. see faith and not respond to it. Ask, I asked the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. His daughter lay dying. His 12-year-old daughter lay dying at home. He ran and said, Jesus, run, come quickly. My daughter is dying at home. She needs help. And I know if you come, she's going to live. My God, Jesus is on his way. The crowd is strong in him. But then came a woman who touched the clothes, touched his clothes, the hem of his garments, and she was immediately made whole. And Jesus stopped. 
Because wherever he sees faith, he's got to acknowledge it. Wherever he sees worship, he's going to have to acknowledge it. This Syrophoenician woman, this Canaanite woman, bowed down and began to worship the Lord on behalf of her grief-stricken child, her demon-possessed daughter. She began to worship the Lord because I know that you, Lord, can handle my situation. Hallelujah. But be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Manda Shama. Somebody have a situation right now. Somebody in your state. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came online with, but I'm telling you, all you got to do is worship the Lord right now and watch God work in your life. All you got to do is begin to open up your heart. Let it flow out of your mouth. Let true worship emanate, transcend from the earthly realm into the heavenly realm and bring God into your situation. Bring Thank you, God Jesus. Your house. Bring God Hallelujah. Into your and watch a miracle come into your house. That woman received a miracle Lord. on behalf of her child. Her demon-possessed child got delivered that same hour. Marco Nurovo Shama. In the name of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank Manda. you, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. True worshippers. Manda Koshama, the Father seeketh such. He's looking for a true worshiper. He's looking for you. Hallelujah. He's looking for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he wants to make us into a true worshiper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They that worship him must worship him in spirit, in the sincerity of your heart, and according to the word of Almighty God. It's prescribed how to worship. Hallelujah. We must follow the prescription, present our bodies living, holy, acceptable sacrifice, reasonable service that he requires of us, and watch God work on your behalf. He's that kind of God. He can't ignore your worship. He will not ignore your praise. Hallelujah. It attracts him. He's attracted to you when you begin to worship him. Hallelujah. When others look and see my God and Savior, a prostitute. Hallelujah. Ask the woman who washed his feet with her hair. Hallelujah. And wash, her, wash, wash his feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair. They looked and saw a prostitute, but the Lord saw a worshiper. Mandayabo Shama, Holy Ghost, he's looking for somebody on this line tonight. Hallelujah. Who'll surrender all to him, who'll worship him in spite of. No matter the condition that you'll find yourself in, if you begin to worship him, he'll come through for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, even now. Even right now, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory, because you alone are worthy. Somebody just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. All the honor belongs to you. All the worship and the praise belongs to you. And we give it all to you, Lord Jesus, even oh, now. Yes, even Jesus. now. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can worship him out of your situation. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Thank, Thank you, you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Can you just open a line and allow us to just worship? Just, just let worship just flow even now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody just worship the Lord. Just allow your praise to just lift up.
Hallelujah. The name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your grace. Hallelujah. Holy God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Elder Brown, could you close for us, sir? Praise God. Praise God. Unmute your mic. Elder Brown, you're not hearing us? Yes, I'm hearing this. Oh, one. Okay, okay. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Everyone Praise God. Thanks for the powerful weapon that we have. And that is the weapon of praise. And the weapon that brings walls down. 
the weapon that caused giants to fall, the weapon that, weapon that gives victory. Tonight, we want to thank God that we've been empowered one more time. The weapon that we have in our arsenal that we should use, the Lord is expecting us to use, to worship him in spirit and in truth. The teacher said, with all that we have, the very soul, with all sincerity, we must worship the Lord. And so we want to thank God tonight that we've been refreshed in our spirit of this beautiful tool. But that God for our pastor tonight was availing himself to speak to our hearts. And as the words go forth tonight, I'm sure that there is someone who listened in who may not yet have surrendered your life to the Lord. It's a grand occasion. Why do you wait here, brother? Why do you tarry so long? It's full time that you surrender your life to the Lord. Allow him to come through for you. To rule and reign in your life. That the miracle can come to your home. That you can experience him in a special marked way. Hallelujah. I want to thank you all. Those who have joined us near and far. I want to thank all the brethren who have tuned in. And all those others who have joined us. The Lord bless you as you continue to join us in worship tonight we have some prayer requests that we want to make mention of the salvation we have um brother robert robert's family his daughter and son for salvation look to those for healing little zoe oliphant will be moving tonsils on Thursday. Shani needs healing, was diagnosed with fibroids, blocking her urethra. She's unable to do the natural process. The Lord allows us to do Javeen, night feeling pain and aches in her body. What a healing Jesus we have found in you. Hallelujah. Prayer for Vanessa's recovery. She had a heart, heart attack. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and for covering the daily reads, needs God's intervention in a family situation. And so tonight, Lord, we want to bring these for you. Oh God Almighty, as they have put forth their request, Lord, none is too strange for you because you're the kind of God. There is no sickness, Lord Jesus, that is too great for you. Yes, Lord, your word said you can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Your words did say, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. And so tonsillitis is, is nothing for you. Oh, God, neither is fibroids. Oh, that are pain and aches in the body. None of that, Lord, is too difficult for you. Uh, someone who has suffered from an heart attack, Lord Jesus, as in Vanessa's case, Lord, you can restore Hallelujah. health. You can restore everything yes. to normalcy. Yes. Hallelujah. We lift you up tonight, Lord, as our healing Jesus. Hallelujah. Able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. The Lord who spoke and it was done, who commanded and it stood fast. Hallelujah. In your name we pray tonight, Jesus Christ, uh, that your sons and your daughters will receive complete healing. Yes, Hallelujah to God. will be restored to health in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, for Robert's family, in the name of Jesus' son and his sons and daughter, for salvation, for this cause you came, Lord, that we will have life and have it more abundantly. Your words that you came to seek and to save them that were lost. And so tonight, Lord, we present them into your precious hand. And for other families tonight, Lord God, we're their children to be saved. Oh God, partner not yet saved. Hallelujah. And family members, brothers and sisters who have not yet been saved. Certainly, Lord, we can't sit contented. Oh God, we are loved ones on the outside. And so we place, oh God, those families, those family members before you tonight, Lord. And we call on your precious name. Amen. That, oh God, walls will be broken down. That, oh God, in the name of Jesus, stronghold will be broken. Uh, high places will be brought down, Lord Jesus. 
and that salvation will come home to your children. For this cause you came to earth, Lord, that we will have life and have it more abundantly. In the name of Jesus Christ, the kneel is covering. Oh, God, your, your hands are not too short that they can't reach her even where she is right now, Lord, that your divine coverage will be upon her, Lord, that she'll be delivered, she'll be set free in the name of Jesus Christ, free from any form of diabolical force, from any form of bondage that the enemy of soul will seek to bring unto your children, that they be delivered, they be set free even now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, you continue to bless this ministry. I pray you continue to inspire our pastor, oh God Almighty. I pray you continue, oh God, to inspire him to put a word in his mouth or to speak to his to your children for such a time as this a word in our spirit. Oh God, that's going to take us to the other level that we will grow, Lord, to new heights in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings tonight. We thank for everyone that has heard us tonight, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who have not yet given their lives to you. And oh God, their hearts will be troubled tonight, Lord God, that someone will recognize oh, that the best friend to have is Jesus and that they'll seek a friend, hallelujah, before they need one, that they'll surrender their lives to you, Lord, come to know you, who to know is life everlasting. We thank you for this, oh God, meeting. We thank you for this broadcast. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this platform that you've allowed us, Lord God, to proclaim your word. We pray you continue to strengthen and keep your children. Oh God, that you cover our homes, cover our children. Oh God, cover our possessions in the name of Jesus Christ. Let, oh God, no evil come nigh our dwelling, Lord Jesus. But oh God, as you watch over this, as they, as they oh God, and watches over our children, so you will watch over us, Lord God, that we protected that your angels will be at guard. You'll be our shield and butler, our defense. Hallelujah to God. We thank you for your blessing. Even right now, we look to you in Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's say amen, brethren. Let's amen. say amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. I just want to thank God again for our pastor. For the Amen. Words that he has brought. And uh, Sister Zara, there be any announcement for you just come in and do that for us. Now. Our pastor will come and, and dismiss, dismiss us. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right, so okay. There's a few announcements here um, that we will be having prayer meeting um, Thursday night at 7.15 and also don't miss youth service on Friday night, Friday night also at 7.15, right? In addition, so Thursday, night, that mean, Thursday night is 7.30 for prayer. Oh, 7.30, my boy. So Thursday night is 7.30 for prayer and Friday night 7.15 for youth service. Um, the Sunday school classes, the links remain the same. Right, and also um, all our services are uploaded to the Better United Church Apostolic former page. So if you didn't miss it or you want to go ahead and review and make additional notes, you can um, view the services on our YouTube page. And don't forget um, if there is any need of counseling or prayer or just someone to talk to or pray with, um, we have the numbers here. Right, um, for persons who need counseling or prayer in this style. All right, praise the Lord. All right, sir. Praise okay. God. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks for again, Brother Domain. To everyone again, God bless you. Good to have you all. Again, again, yeah. greetings to everyone who visited us. See a couple of persons online. God bless you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Good to have you. God bless you. Let's raise our hands for the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Let all God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you.